try a little bit harder to convince you why you need to take care of yourself as much as possible. As I said before, we're going to have to do, have some help sooner or later at the hospitals or what, because of all the, uh, the dangers that we've got uh, to look out for. But you can look out for a great deal of them and take care of yourself. Uh, but there are some that are pretty obvious and if you do have to go to a conventional doctor in an emergency or get some kind of uh, medication or whatever they want to call it, be sure and call a compound pharmacist before you take it and see what the other diseases that it's going to cause or contribute to. I was uh, just going back over some of the notes I had made about the May apple and the fact that the May apple has cured, cured so many cancers and tumors and whatever and it always really uh, upsets me when I see the poor people running out here trying to make a ton of money for the researchers so that they can find a cure for breast cancer. I had a friend, a scientist down in Texas, who had discovered a cure for leukemia. And he went to A&M University where they have a big uh, science lab there where they're doing research for, supposedly for cancer. And he was so excited, he went in and he told the receptionist, he says, I, I have a cure for leukemia. And, uh, of course, it's a form of cancer, as we all know. And the, the receptionist, being ignorant like the rest of us, said, Oh, that's just what we've been looking for. So, she said, let me get somebody for you. So she went in the back, and she came back. And behind her was two great big guys. And they told my friend, who is a scientist, get your shit and get out of here. He said, but I've got the cure for cancer. They said, get your shit and get out of here before you get arrested. We are not looking for cures here. We're doing research. Now get out. And that's the crux of the whole thing. I wouldn't give two cents for research. I, I may be wrong, but everything's already here. And what they're doing is bastardizing the natural chemicals or in the natural uh, herbs and things like that. Uh, an example, the, uh, the may apple has been used for thousands of years by the Native Americans to cure all kinds of cancer. They put it on their tumors, it draws them out. As a matter of fact, I had a bout with some kind of something, I don't know what it was, I got a hold of and I couldn't get rid of it and I couldn't get rid of it and I went and got a, uh, an antibiotic and there are antibiotics at the health food store. Uh, there's antibiotics, uh, there's propolis, which is, comes from the beehive, that's an antibiotic. I finally went to the mainstream medicine, they gave me antibiotics, I took two series uh, no, three series of antibiotics. This thing was in my throat and chest and in my mouth, whatever it was. I don't know where it was, where it came from or what it is. But when I uh, finally got tired of, of them trying to do it, they finally gave me a, a real strong dose. So I took a double series of that and it still hadn't gotten rid of it. This stuff was so bad, if any of it touched my skin on the outside from my mouth, it would break my mouth out, my, my chin out. My gums looked like they were starting to rot away. I decided none of this is going to do it. So I went and got some mayapple root powder and put it in my mouth like you would put snuff in there. And I put it on the top and the bottom 
and on the inside and the outside and I did that four times and I just let it sit there it I know that some of it went down my throat I didn't experience any any effects of that but it's gone it's gone and it was gone in two days I did it morning and then again in the evening it's gone yet they it is Podophyllin pelletin, that's the scientific name for May apple, and it's the main ingredient in chemotherapy, which they have fixed so that it will just as likely kill you as not. Um, the Native Americans used it, they ingested it to get rid of parasites. Think about cancer. Is that or is that not a parasite? I don't remember hearing of them ever having cancer. They ingested it to get rid of all the parasites. They did this once a year in the springtime when people did cleansings and things like that. And they put it on all of their sores and whatever. The old brown recluse, they could put that on, on that real quick and they didn't rot out their flesh. That thing will rot out the flesh till the hole is this big with a doctor putting all kinds of salve and this and that and the other. I've seen it done. And that stuff does nothing. It just makes keeps going and they keep they keep digging out the proud flesh as my mother calls it. It's uh, something, uh, it's the flesh that's dying. They dig that out to try to help it to heal and put salves on it. This stuff will pull it out just like that. But a friend of mine sent me a, this little note here that she had, I don't know what she got it out of. Uh, it's, uh, as you can see, it's, it's May Apple's Cancer Fighting Precursor. And I think it's from a Camilla Cannell is in the USDA ARS Natural Products Utilization Research Unit, room 2021, University of Mississippi, in uh, Oxford, Mississippi. That's where this is from. And what they say is here, the humble May apple, so plentiful in the shade of forests in the southern and central United States, may soon take a more prominent place in the sun thanks to research. Scientists have found the May apple is an excellent source uh, a compound used for making cancer-fighting chemicals. Traditionally, podophyllin pelotoxin has been obtained from the uh, something of a wild Asian plant. Podophyllin pelin, pelin or whatever they've got here. Imodi, a cousin of May apple. The Asian plant is found only in alpine and sublime, sublime, sublime areas of the Himalayan mountains. Well, I'll go on skip a bunch of this and they go into all of this stuff here and then they say that uh, the ARS Mississippi team has found an effective way to extract podophyllin toxins, which the May apple stores in the form of Glucosin, glucosides, do, I, I don't know all the terms. Uh, Canel says the May apple adds a glucose molecule to podophyllin toxins so the compound can be safely stored until the plant is attacked. The key to extraction is to make the plant think it's under attack by simulating an herbal herbivore attack can manage to turn on the plant's glucose removing machinery. Now this is how they make it so that you think that you can't use it yourself. Could you tell me how you can make a plant think that it's attacked or not being attacked when you jerk its roots out of the ground? This just doesn't make sense. But they're trying to get it, uh, a patent on this. Uh, it's, it's 
just it, it's just so flabbergasting to me. I don't know what to do. But once they get through doing this the shucking thing and whatever it is that they got to do to make it so that it release, releases its toxins when the FDA already says that it's too toxic for us to use ourselves on our own, which they've said about just about every herbal remedy there is because we're too stupid to know how to do it. The natives were so dumb. They didn't know how to take care of themselves, yet they managed for thousands of years before science came to this continent. Uh, a lot of other countries are protected by law from some of these poisonous drugs. And I made the mistake of saying to some people that I named some countries that are actually uh, socialized. Now, I'm not saying that this country should be socialized. I'm just asking a question. Why? Why can't we have laws to protect us the same way they do? Protect us from people who make poison drugs and that kind of thing. People who cheat us, they live off of our bones, I like to say. Uh, for instance, the Vioxx people, I, estimates of tens and hundreds of thousands of people were killed by Vioxx after the FDA asked them, asked them, not told them, asked them to take it off the market. They kept right on until the lawsuits got so much, they had calculated how much they would make, and when it got to the point where the settlements started to dig into their profits, they went ahead and settled their lawsuits and took it off the market. And that's the way it goes. That's how it is here. And it's happened over and over and over. We have so many poisons in our food. Like uh, the, they, this weight thing is a big, big deal in this country. The biggest thing that causes people to gain weight is stress. They keep them scared to death. They're scared of other countries. They're scared of, uh, to go to other countries. They're scared of anybody that's not like them. Anybody that's got anything different from them, they're scared to death. So people are in a terrible state most all the time, worried about this or that and the other. So they give them all these things and they make billions of dollars off of these weight loss uh, remedies that they tell them. And they give them weight loss drugs and whatever. When some of them have poisons in them, and like, just a little everyday example is the, uh, the poison that they put in diet sodas, aspartame. What do you think your body does when it is threatened? When it gets poisoned? When it's threatened by starvation, for instance? Well, what it does is go into a survival mode. And when you get poisoned or something like that, you're most apt to gain weight because your body is glomming on to everything that goes in it. And you can continue and you can starve it down, but when you do, you're going to get other illnesses. You can go right ahead and do it. If you want to limit your intake, Make sure that you're eating properly and taking supplements. And if you want to exercise, you can exercise. And some exercise, rote exercise, is good for you. But the best exercise is doing something productive because your, your body and your mind is made for production, for doing or accomplishing things. And it works together. This is one big unit. It works together. Your body is constantly healing itself, taking care of itself as best it can. You have to help it. You have to give it assistance or it will break down in one place or another. If you overdo, for instance, I've watched a lot of bodybuilders and paid attention. I, that's, that's one thing that, that's got me 
to the point where I see things different from a lot of people around me. When I see somebody else doing things and it's causing negative things, then I try not to do that. I'll give you a little, for instance, my uh, varicose veins run in my family. And my mother got, had to have her stripped, and my sisters all had them, and this, that, and the other. Well, if you want to avoid those, avoid a couple of things. Never sit down unless you put your feet up. Don't work standing on your feet unless you have support on your legs to keep the blood from settling in your feet and your legs and putting strain on your heart too. Don't be constipated. Constipation is a big part of varicose veins because it cuts off the circulation back and forth, up and down. I talk about the remedies and cures for constipation and I, I, there's junk on the market that you can run to the store and get but they're temporary fixes. You need to find out what is the cause of this constipation and get rid of it. Otherwise after a while those enemas and those um, other things are just not going to work. They'll stop working and you'll die like my mother did with an impaction as big as her head. That could have been prevented. But she didn't know what I was telling her when I told her about the uh, Lugol solution of iodine. She thought that she equated it with a tincture of iodine that you put on sores and things like that. It's not the same thing. Your body has to have iodine to function. Your, your thyroid has to have it. Your, your immune system has to have it. And they put it in our salt and they bastardize the salt so that we can't take, we can't eat it. But there, there are other salts out there that we can use. We don't have to use that junk that they've got that's a salt substitute, another poison. It's, it's so bad I can't taste it. I can't stand it. But anyway, that's, that's another story. I want to get back to the fact that you have to watch out for everything. Your best bet is to check on a natural remedy and start with the small things. If you can take care of most of the small things, you won't need to go to the doctors. I'm not saying don't go once in a blue moon to find out if everything's working great, if you're not that in tune with your body. Me, I'm pretty in tune with my body. But I won't say that in extreme circumstances like that thing with my mouth and my throat, I won't go and give them a try and see if they can figure it out. They couldn't figure it out. But there are times when they can. But be careful about the drugs. Uh, check out my book. I'm not going to make this a, a long thing. I want you to remember all of the drugs that you can remember, including the uh, pain, uh, the pain shots that they were giving people just recently that killed a whole pile of people. Well, you know, I kind of like to have a little warning when I'm going to die. I don't want to be helped out and all of a sudden I'm dying. When all I've got some pain, I don't want that to happen to me. So, I had a car wreck. My daughter and I got rear-ended sitting at a red light. Well, I went to the doctor. They said my back was in a bad, bad condition. My attorney sent me to a pain management because the pain was just about more than anybody could stand. I figured out real quick, they gave me some real strong pain medicine. One of them was um, this one that will make you sleep. And I took one of those. And I went back and I told them, I said, I can't take this because it makes me sleep two days. They said, oh, well, you can break it up. It's, uh, let's see, what is it? It's, it's one of these... Um, Psychotic drugs, really, I think. It, um, Xanax, that, that was it. 
And um, then I noticed that the people that were coming in and doing their exercises and trying to get their body back in shape were not the ones that came in the most. The ones that came in the most were the ones that had gotten hooked on these drugs and were coming in to get refills. And the receptionist even told me, those are all the drug addicts. Well, guess why they got to be drug addicts? And I'll go into the pain, pain management on another thing. But I want you to know, anytime that you get involved with the mainstream medicine, you need to be careful. So start out by going to a, a health place, a health food store. We have whole foods and all kinds of places that, that concentrate on making sure that the food is wholesome and healthy and not genetically altered and so on and so forth. Get your food there. Eat simple. Eat raw as much as you can. I'm not saying eat raw meat. I'm saying avoid as much meat as you can. But do that and if you have to go to a doctor, try to go to a holistic doctor. Try to find one that has your best interests at heart, that knows that your body is a whole unit. It's an, organi an organism that works as a unit. Something might be wrong here and it might be caused from something up here. They need to be looking at that. The, you can have something wrong with your feet and it might be your back. So, in, unless they're, if they're just a footman, they might not ever notice that it was caused from your back and be just a treating and a treating that. Because we've got individual doctors that do individual things. Not anymore like the old days when they had one doctor that looked at the whole person, figured out what they were eating, figured out what they were doing, what their habits were, and all of this stuff, and what might be causing what. But you've got to take control yourself first. You have got to take them. Unless you like surprises, I'm not one who does. If I get a surprise, I want it to be a whole bunch of good stuff. Not that I'm dying or that I have no choice in dying. So I'm, I'm counting on everybody that hears me to talk to their relatives, to try to, to get everybody involved in taking care of themselves. You don't have to have an elaborate diet. You don't have to have all of these uh, exotic things. You don't have to have all these medicines and things like that. There are certain fundamental things that you need to do to take care of yourself. Go to my website. It's natureslegacycures.com. Check it out. I'm going to be getting a lot more herbs and things on there that I know that you can use for different things. In my book it talks about the uh, uh, a lot of the, the cures that were used by people as far back as Cleopatra the, with the natural uh, oils and things like that, the essential oils. So there will be, I've crammed a bunch of stuff in this one little book. Go to my website, check it out, and try to be healthy. It will help you in making good decisions in your life and everything else because your brain is connected to this poor old sick body. If it's sick, so is your brain. Bye. Have a good one.